Hey, what's up everybody? Malt Mage here, and this is my Shadowlands Covenant Mount Guide. In this video, I break down the different mounts you can obtain from each covenant. The first set of covenant mounts we are going to look at is the Venthyr Covenant Mounts. You get the Crypt Gargon from completing the Venthyr Campaign Chapter 4 quest called Mirror Mirror. You get the Sinfall Gargon by getting to Renown Level 23 and purchasing it for 5,000 anima from the vendor called Chachi. You get the Battle Gargon from completing the Venthyr Campaign Chapter 8 quest called the Medallion of Dominion. And you get the Gravestone Battle Gargon automatically rewarded to you once you get to Renown Level 39. These are all the Venthyr mounts associated with the Campaign and Renown levels. Next is the Desire's Battle Gargon. To get this mount, you first will need to get your Ember Court to Tier 4. After you get your Ember Court to Tier 4, you then will need to select the Countess as one of your guests. You then will need to become best friends with the Countess and do an additional Ember Court with her being very happy or elated, and the mount will be in her cache. The way to get her to be happy or elated is to keep inviting her as a guest for your Ember Court scenario and gaining reputation with her with each Ember Court you do. One thing you can do is talk to her at some point during the Ember Court scenario and this will give her additional happiness. Second, when you invite her as a guest twice, there will be an assassin near the mingling guest before the opening of the court. You can kill the assassin to get additional happiness with her. Next is the Battle Gargon Salissa. To get this mount, you first will need your transportation network to be at tier 3. After it is at tier 3, you will need to check one of the four groups of three broker mirrors which can lead you to a chest you can loot once per day. There is usually only one set of broken mirrors that is up per week, however it has been known to randomly change. In the video description, I have provided coordinates for each of the four groups of broken mirrors. If you find one of the broken mirrors within a group, then it means that that group's broken mirror group is up for the week. Keep checking daily the broken mirror groups until you obtain the mount. Next is the Hope Crusher Gargon. To get this mount, you need to kill Hope Crusher located here in Revendrath. He will have approximately a 1% chance to drop the mount. He has a respawn timer of 45 minutes to an hour, and you will need to be in a group to kill him. You will only be able to loot the Hope Crusher once per day. Next is the Inquisition Gargon. To get this mount, you will need to unlock the Avowed Reputation. To do that, you will need to get the quest called the Abuse of Power from the Accuser at this location in Revendreth. The prerequisite to getting this quest is completing the Revendreth main storyline. This quest will get you started on a short quest chain that you will need to complete. After you finish the quest chain, you will need to get exalted with the Avowed. You can do that by grinding mobs at this location here and killing mobs in the Halls of Atonement dungeon. Once you are exalted, you can speak to Archivist Janir, located here, and she will sell the mount to you for 2,000 Sinstone Fragments, which is a currency you gather by killing the same mobs that grant you the Avowed Reputation. Next is the Horrid Dreadbling. To get this mount, you will need to set your Anima Conductor to the Wingcrept Hill. After you channel your Anima Conductor, you will need to grab a Dread Hollow Bolt and hand the Bolt to Wing Smash. You can find a Dread Hollow Bolt at this location here in Revendreth. After you get the bolt, speak to Wing Smash located here and select the dialogue option Let's Smash. After that, he will fire the Ballista and that will bring down the Harika the Horrid Rare. This rare only has 165k HP, so it will be easily solvable. Harika will have approximately a 2% chance to drop them out and you will only be able to loot Harika once per day. Now we are on to the Night Fae Covenant Mounts. You get the Dreamlight Rune Stag by completing the Night Fae Campaign Chapter 1. You get the Shade Leaf Rune Stag by getting to Renown Level 23 and purchasing the mount from Elwyn the Renowned Quartermaster for 5,000 anima. You get the Enchanted Dreamlight Rune Stag by completing the last quest in the Night Fae Campaign called Drust and Ashes, and the Enchanted Shade Leaf Rune Stag by getting to Renown Level 39, then purchasing it from Elwyn for 100 anima and 40 Grateful Offerings. These are all the Night Fae mounts associated with the Campaign and Renown levels. Next is the Winterborn Runestalk. You must be part of the Night Fae Covenant to loot and ride this mount. You must also be revered with the Core of the Night faction. Once those requirements are met, you can purchase the Winterborn Runestalk from Smindlenoose located here in Ardenweald. You will be able to purchase it for 5,000 anima and 5 Grateful Offerings. Next is the Wild Glimmer for a Prowler. You must be Night Fae to loot this mount. However, any alts you have that are not Night Fae can still ride it. You can get this mount by purchasing it through Elwyn the Renowned Quartermaster for 5,000 anima and 75 Grateful Offerings. 
or by setting your Anima Conductor to Tyranna Scythe. Then heading over to Tyranna Scythe to interact with the Sparkling Anima Seed to get the buff called Anima Seed Light. This spell removes the dodge buff from the rare Valfir the Unrelenting, located here in Ardenweald. Valfir will have a low chance to drop them out. Next is the Wakener's Runestog and Enchanted Wakener's Runestog. For the Wakener's Runestog, you need to have at least a Tier 2 Queen's Conservatory. You then we need to have two Wild Sea Rue Grains and Divine Untamed Spirits or Greater Untamed Spirits. You will need to plant two Wild Sea Rue Grains on two Anima Catalyst plots. You then will need to use Divine or Greater Spirit on the Wild Sea to Regrowth that is connected to two or more Anima Catalyst plots. Then wait three and a half days for the incubation and after three and a half days open the Wild Sea to Regrowth and speak with the NPC that will appear. Then loot the Queen's Conservatory Cache and hope it will drop them out. For the Enchanted Awakener's Runestog, you will need to have at least a Tier 5 Queen Conservatory, and then you will need to ensure that you use 4 Wild Seed Root Grains instead of just 2, and uses a Divine or Greater Spirit on the Wild Seed of Regrowth that is connected to 4 Anima Catalyst Plots. Next is the Vibrant Flutterwing and Enchanted Winterborn Runestog. To get these mounts, you first will need to unlock the Transportation Network in the Night Fae Covenant Hub. Once unlocked, you will have to do a short quest line that starts with a quest called a Mycelial Network. After you complete that short quest chain, you will unlock access to a new reputation called Marimus. And in the Marimus hub, there will be dailies that you can complete to gain reputation with them. For both mounts, you will need to be revered with them, and once revered, you can purchase the mounts from their vendor that sells them for 5,000 anima. Now we are on to the Kyrian Covenant mounts. You get the Eternal Phalanx of Courage by completing the Kyrian campaign quest called A New Age. You get the Phalanx of Purity by getting to Renown level 23 and purchasing it for 5,000 anima from the vendor called Adjutant Gallos. You get the Phalanx of Courage from completing the last Kyrian campaign quest called Building the Base. And you get the Eternal Phalanx of Purity automatically rewarded to you once you get to Renown level 39. These are all the Kyrian mounts associated with the campaign and Renown levels. Next is the Phalanx of Loyalty. To get this mount, you need your Path of Ascension Covenant feature to be at rank 2. Once it is at rank 2, you will need to defeat Mad Mortimer on Loyalty difficulty, and then you will receive the mount. You can also get the Eternal Phalanx of Loyalty by upgrading your Path of Ascension to rank 5. Once it's at rank 5, you will need to complete the Death Force Sworn achievement, which requires you to defeat Thran on the Trial of Wisdom difficulty without damaging her before destroying all phylacteries. And the final mount you can get that is associated with the Path of Ascension is the Eternal Phalanx of Humility. You can get this mount by completing the achievement Learning from the Masters, which requires you to defeat Callisthene and Athanos with Pelagos, Mykonos, and Kela, which are soulbinds that you fight with in the Path of Ascension. Next is the Phalanx of Humility. For this mount, you will need to set your Anima Conductor to the Purity's Pinnacle. Once your Anima Conductor is set to the Purity's Pinnacle, you will need to go to the treasure chest called the Penitence of Purity located here in Bastion. When you are at this location, you will need to look around for a bell. It does not always spawn in the same location, however the bell tends to always be relatively close to the treasure. When you find the bell, you will need to click on it and commune with it. This will get you started on a puzzle mini game, which will require you to move through the circle on the floor without getting hit. Once you complete this mini game, you will be able to loot the treasure at the end for a low chance at the melt. You will be able to loot this treasure daily. Now we are on to the Necrolord Covenant Mounts. You get the Warbred Tireless by completing the Necrolord campaign quest called Enemy at the Door. You get the Plague Rot Tireless by gaining to Renown level 23 and purchasing it for 5,000 anima from the vendor called Zhu Zetai. You get the Armored Warbred Tireless by completing the Necrolord campaign quest called The Third Fall of Kel'Thuzad. And you get the Armored Plague Rot Tireless by getting to Renown level 39 and purchasing it from the vendor Zhu Zetai. These are all the Necrolord mounts associated with the campaign and Renown levels. Next is the Armored Bone Hoof Tireless. You have two ways of getting this mount. First, you can get your Anima Conductor to Tier 3 and channel it to the Theater of Pain. You then will need to grab a daily quest on the east side of the Theater of Pain from the Broker. After you pick up this quest, you will be able to spawn the rare called Sabrina the Bone Cleaver. This rare is hard to solo. After you kill her, you will have a low chance to drop the mount and you will be able to loot her daily. Or you can gather 5,000 anima and 100 grateful offerings and purchase the mount from Bender Zhu Zetai. Next, I am going to show you how to get all the mounts associated with the Abomination Factory. 
First, you can obtain the Bosone Flesh Rock by getting the Abomination Factory to rank 5 and spending 5 superior parts and 50 malleable flesh with abominable stitching. Next, you can get the Chosen Towerless by completing the achievement The Gang's All Here, which requires you to build each of the following constructions that are listed here on screen with the abominable stitching. And the final mount you can get associated with the Abomination Factory is the Armored Chosen Towerless, which is awarded from the achievement Things to Do When You're Dead, which require you to complete four different abominable stitching achievements listed here on screen. Next is the Predatory Plague Rock. To get this mount, you will need to channel your Anima Conductor to the House of Constructs and head to this location here to spawn Geiger. Geiger is easily sellable and can be looted daily. He will have a small chance to drop the mount. And thank you all for watching. Those are all the mounts in this guide. If you like this video, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I also like to stream on Twitch. If you would like to check out my Twitch stream, I have provided a link in the description down below.